Welcome to our next phase of preparation for the Advanced Practitioner Diploma and an investigation of the Jnanamaya Kosha, the realm of knowings, of, of our understandings and of our beliefs, which turn out to be the magical creation process of our whole lives. It's a fantastic world to discover because if you can become a mastermind of this, if you can become your own designer and your own sculptor of your Vijnanamaya Kosha, of this world of your knowings and attitudes and beliefs, it turns out you become the designer and sculptor of your whole life. That's got to be a good thing if you know how to do it. So should we have a go and see what we can discover? Yoga gives you the ability to do this with sublime and pinpoint accuracy. And I hope in these few short minutes to give you a taste of how that's possible. And when you do that, you discover that you are now able to respond to the flow of life and listen to your intuitive wisdom and thus live a life which is in the pathway of the natural flow of life or in Sanskrit, Dharma. Intuitive wisdom, ability to create your life, how to stay in the flow. The Vijnana Maikosha is really the beginning of an incredible life. So um, let's just invite you, as you're standing here or sitting here, to pause for a minute, give yourself a good shugal, as they would say in Scotland. Some nice big deep breaths, as they would say in Tasmania, where I'm from. <laughs> And feel as if your spine is lengthening with each of these breaths. Breathing in, breathing fully, breathing openly. Open the intercostal muscles, lift the clavicular muscles on each breath. <sighs> feel like you're fully here. And how does your body feel? It feels better, doesn't it? More engaged and more alive. And how does your pranic field, how does the field around you feel? Possibly a little bit more engaged and bright. How do your emotional landscape feel just by doing that? I bet they feel more awake. And then, here's a subtle one. Do your attitudes about life change in any way as a result of going from before we started this video to just a good sugar and some briefs, uh, some breaths? I wouldn't be surprised if you find that your attitude to life is a bit freer, a bit more interesting, and a bit more open. How's that? That's just the power of breath and a tiny little example of how it's possible for your actions in your physical world to actually ripple up through the koshas and change even your most fundamental attitude to life. Because if I said to you in the middle of a shopping mall, okay, I'd like you to have a much more engaged and open consciousness and attitudes towards life, you'd probably go, ah, give me an ice cream or a latte. <laughs> we just did it with breathing. That's how fast your ability to transform yourself can be. Now, let's take your favorite posture, whatever it might be, a posture that is something that you really love to do. And I invite you now to um, either pause this recording or listen and then come back and do it in your own time. So I'm going to imagine doing the triangle posture. It's the master posture for second chakra, it's the master posture for base chakra, if you know what you're doing, uh, for opening the base chakra. Um, and it can be a master posture for heart as well, and for rising a feeling of connectedness from those two fundamental parts of our psyche up to heart. Do the triangle posture. Do it with grace, do it with ease, do it fully and with delight. And when you come out of it, I wouldn't be surprised if you find it very easy to take your consciousness to the sacral region. Sacral region. So you won't give it a try. Next time you're doing the triangle posture, or whatever your favorite posture is, it will take you to one or more of the chakras of your body, or the regions of the one of the chakras of your body. You know, the rotating triangle it takes you from Manipur up to heart, the um, uh, pigeon breath opens Vishuddhi, the seat of compassion, marvelous for opening the heart. Uh, the sitting forward bend, incredible for base center, etc. Tree posture, Ajna center, if you know what you're doing. Triangle posture, come out of it, awareness, 
in the sacral area. Now this is a trigger point, a shetram, shetram, for the second chakra, the part of your consciousness that does relating, or doesn't <laughs> do relating. Suppose part of your conditioning says it's a good idea not to value myself. What kind of life will you lead compared with the consciousness of someone whose conditioning says, it's a really good idea to value myself. Can you almost feel, I can actually feel my second chakra, my pelvic region changing in those two. If I hold, oh, it's a good idea not to value myself. I can feel a dullness arising down there compared with, it's actually a really good idea, a cellular knowing kind of good idea to value myself and to know that I'm a presence in this universe that's valued and valuable. As I do that, the whole field in my second chakra and even my physical um, body starts to vibrate with a new openness and a new energy. That's a knowing, that is. If you place a new knowing in your sacral region after doing the triangle posture, even if you just take your awareness to the sacral region, there in your physical body, and perhaps to the pranic field around the sacral region. Let it be delightful, delicious, transparent, warm, bright, involved, active, supporting. Whatever feels good for you, let it be one of those qualities. You'll find you can design this. That's what we do in the APD. We show you how to find the language that enables you to design it. And then what emotions would you like to have on the topic of relating? Maybe you'd like an emotion of completeness or love or fullness. And then what attitudes? Suppose you choose the attitude of, I choose to visualize that I am the person who loves and values myself. Imagine if you just did that. When you've got the gateway to second chakra open as the triangle posture does for you, when you hold an affirmation like that, it goes deeply in to your unconscious and gives you freedom to rewire yourself to become like that. This is the power of yoga. It enables you to go from physical through pranic to emotional to the very knowings that structure our whole awareness. And you can begin to redesign them if you, they turn out to be not as skillful as you'd like them to be. You can be the master of your own consciousness. One of my favorite examples of this was, I was with a dear friend and she had um, quite strong endometriosis. It was very painful and very, very, very unpleasant in her life, as, as we know. And one day she came to me blazing with delight. And she said, Andrew, I've just realized, and this was after a whole series of yoga postures designed for second chakra. And she said, you know, the funny thing is I've just realized I am deeply and truly loved by this universe. What's the issue? I just am loved by the universe. And you could see her standing. Her pelvis went into neutral. There was just an uprising power from it. And I thought, well, this is fantastic, lovely to hear. Six months later, I saw her again. And she said, you wouldn't believe it, Andrew. My endometriosis, gone. I can't claim to make medical judgments or pronouncements on topics like this. But what I can say is that when we change our knowings, we change our world. So I hope that this gives you a little bit of an idea that you can tap into the original knowings that make your life. And when you start to discern what those knowings really are, you can start to hear the knowings which tell you how to be in the flow of life. And that's one of the great things we show you and teach you in the Advanced Practitioner how to know that you are part of an evolving, changing, flowing universe. See you soon.